So what is the most important electronic component today? And you have few million of it inside your pocket, in your cell phone. You got it, we're gonna be talking about transistors. If it wasn't for transistors, our life would not be the way it is today. Everything is around you has transistors in it, from, from this camera I'm looking at, to um, electronics, to circuits, to processors. Everything, one way or another, has a transistor inside to serve one purpose or another. Transistor is very simple. All it is is a component that has three sides of it, one is to control the flow of the other two sides. You can think of it as like a shutoff uh, valve. The shutoff is the control, uh, that's called the base on one type of the transistors, and then the other two sides would be the, the, the pipe, like the two sides you would connect to a pipe. And then you would use the shutoff to turn it on and sh shut it back off. And you can turn it half the way on or all the way on. That's basically transistors. Now there are there are different types of transistors. We don't want to get into details. We're trying. We're not trying to, you know, cover every single aspect of for when it comes to transistors. I would need hours and days to cover all that. What we are going to talk about is just what you need to know when it comes to digital electronics. And specifically, if you are a maker and you're building a robot or you want to control an LED or a motor, just like what you really need to know to be able to use transistors. And, and for that matter, we are only covering one type of transistor as well, not, not the other kinds. This is the first example I have for you. It's a large LED that I wouldn't normally be able to connect directly to the microcontroller because this needs more uh, current, um, more energy, more power than the pin on the microcontroller can provide. So a pin, I can turn it on and off, or I can use PWM to to control the energy going out on that pin. We covered these in previous Tech Talks. But then this LED is, is large enough that the, the pin is not sufficient enough to control it. So the way we would control the LED would be through a transistor. Now the pin coming from the microcontroller would go to a transistor. Just like we were controlling the shutoff on the valve we talked about earlier. So the controller is only controlling the transistor, not the LED at all. And then the transistor is what providing the current, the current needed to run the LED. Now, not just the current, you can actually power it up using a higher voltage. And I'll show you how that works. So over here, before I move this away, this LED is fading in and out, so I'm actually using PWM to control the energy going to the transistor controlling how much the transistor is turning on and off, the duty cycle that we covered uh, in uh, previous episodes, and then the transistor in turn is controlling the large LED. How does that circuit look like? So this is a microcontroller, and this is the pin coming out from the microcontroller. Now this pin will be going to the transistor. This is the transistor. Like I said, it had three sides. And then this side goes to the microcontroller. However, a current limiting resistor is needed right here. What value we need here? Let's go with 330. We covered LEDs before. We talked about like uh, the, the resistor needed, and we said this is 330 is what you would use. Same thing. Use 330 over here, and then this over this side will be going to ground. This is the ground level for everything. This is also ground. In other words, this is connected to here, and they are both connected to uh, the negative source on the battery. So let's say I'm running this off a of battery, hypothetically speaking. Uh, this side would be going over here. Now, my LED, this, the large LED that I'm trying to control, this one right here, is, will be right over here, connected to the side of the transistor. So on these couple arrows indicating that this LED is light emitting LED or diode, light emitting diode. Now on this side, this can be connected to uh, the same voltage that's going to the microcontroller or I can use whatever voltage. So let's say I want to provide a higher voltage. Then let's say the microcontroller is running at 3.3 volts, for example. 3.3 volts and that's powering up the microcontroller. But then my LED, I want it brighter, it can handle 
uh, higher voltage, it's special LED, whatever, I can use 5 volts on my uh, LED. Now, that's just an example. I can as well connect the LED, which is the case over here. The LED is just going to the same power source as the uh, microcontroller. Now, the microcontroller is controlling this output, which in turn is controlling the transistor, and the transistor is just opening the flow from here to ground. So if we take the transistor out completely, and then just have a connection to ground, this LED will just come on. Now, the only thing that's missing from this circuit is you actually need a current limiting resistor going to the LED, just like we talked about before. Again, 330. Which this also can be, instead of on that side, can be on this side. It wouldn't make any difference. So this is it. That's how you would control an LED. What is a relay? I'll cover this really quick since it's, it's really simple and you're probably going to need it at some point. So a relay is, uh, it's, it's a physical component more than it's electronics really. Inside the relay is, there is a winding, so there's like a trace go in and then there is winding. And then this winding, when you energize the winding it becomes a magnet. And then this will pull in, there's like a, uh, like a metal piece over here, and there's a metal piece over here. This one doesn't move, it's, it's, um, it's glued inside, it doesn't move. This one is movable, so there's like a joint over here. Um, when, this is, when this coil is energized, it, it, it pulls in that metal, and then these touch each other over here. So it makes a connection. These are physically isolated. They are not connected, connected at all. So this would be useful if, let's say, I have, um, oh, on this side, I have uh, 110 volts, for example. And then over here, I have my circuit that's going to my low voltage electronics. This would be very safe because there is no way this 10 volt, 110 volts can make it down to my circuit. They are physically, again, isolated. There's no connection whatsoever between the two. This is energized, it pulls it in. You can actually hear the relay click when you, when you energize the coil. Now, let me back up a little bit here. So, on this side, we have the, uh, the pins that will go to the winding inside that I would use those pins to energize the coil to turn it on and then on the other side these big connector over here this you will have the two wires that's going to the higher voltage now you have to be very careful if you are connecting something to like 110 volts to control this winding you still need a transistor because this winding needs enough current to attract that metal piece that we talked about but then the current needed is not enough by the microcontroller just like we talked about before there will be a transistor inside and there is in fact a transistor right here um, on, on the circuit that is used to control the winding. There's a little bit special case between the using a motor or relay and using an LED for example. What is so special about this? Let's go back to our winding. So what happens here is when you energize this, this generates, this will have a, like a magnetic field around it because it's energized. When you turn it off, this magnetic field collapses back down. When a magnetic field collapses on in winding, this will end up generating a voltage. So this is now has a, a voltage coming out of it, and a high voltage actually. A voltage that is dangerous for your circuit, it will damage the circuit. Especially that this negative, the voltage coming out is, is negative. So you energize it one way, and then when you release the voltage, the voltage coming back from it, when the, when the winding collapse, I mean the, uh, the, um, the magnetic field collapse, the voltage coming back will be a negative voltage. So to solve this problem, in, in, when they designed the circuit, and you would see it right over here, this is a, a, a small diode that, that goes around the windings. So this is going to the voltage, let's say it's 5 volts. And then over here we would have a diode, not light emitting diode in this case, it's, it's a diode. Diode allow electrons to flow in one 
direction, not the other direction. And then this will go to our transistor, just like we did before. So we have um, this side, this side, this is going to ground, and then this is our transistor. And this is, there is a resistor, and this is going to our, let's say, microcontroller. Now what happens is, this is just like before, we turn the transistor on, this winding will, will energize, the diode has no effect at this point, but now when, when we turn the transistor off, this will generate a negative voltage, but this negative voltage will go right through the, the, uh, the diode. The, the diode will absorb all that negative voltage. So you need a, a decent enough diode, and that's why if you, if, you, if you look on the circuit, the transistor used to control the circuit is a lot smaller than the diode.